there's no doubt that AI is becoming a mainstream in our everyday life, whether it's healthcare, whether it's insurance, or whether it's patient care. But AI models are making decisions every day. But what if these models cannot be trusted? What if these models are not ethical? What if these models are not fair? What if these models are biased? So in the next 10 minutes, I want to take you through what are the steps involved in making these models trusted? And I also want to show you sometimes bias exists in the most unexpected places. So look at this. 94% of the enterprises strongly believe that AI is critical for their success. I don't know who the other 6% is, but let me tell you, they have to embrace AI. But 76% also believe that lack of transparency is impeding the adoption of AI. Think about it, if you're an enterprise. If you're a bank, you denied a loan, how do you explain it to the regulators? Explainability becomes huge in these AI models. Next, I want to take you through a, a video, about a minute video, where IBM worked with Wimbledon to go through hundreds of hours of data to come up with 15 seconds of highlights or snippets where the players are shown. But not only that, how AI helped you build those little snippets in very short period of time, but I also want to show you that bias exists in the most unexpected places. So take a look at this video. Technology is changing the way we view sport. Wimbledon, through their partnership with IBM, is at the cutting edge of this technology. Thanks to groundbreaking AI systems using IBM Watson, the best highlights from multiple matches are captured simultaneously. With over 18 courts and up to four matches per court each day, hundreds of hours of footage are produced, which would ordinarily take a team of editors a huge amount of time to compile into highlights packages. As the AI highlight system continuously tracks the action and ranks every point, highlights packages are created within two minutes of a match finishing. By watching player reactions, listening to crowd excitement levels, and analyzing the gameplay statistics, IBM Watson enables Wimbledon to deliver unmissable moments without delay. So in the past, it all used to be done manually. Think about it, someone sitting in front, going through hundreds of hours of footage, picking 15 second snippets. But now AI has enabled to move much faster. But the second aspect of it is that I want to also show you how bias exists in the most unexpected places. So for example, you know, there's structured and unstructured, static and dynamic data that we took. We created features like player rankings, crowd size, crowd cheer, venue, and we were able to build these models. But what we realized is that in all these models cases, they were picking the snippets or the highlights of the top ranking players. It was always the case. So we were able to run it through Watson op open scale and be able to use bias mitigation software to say, how do we bring lesser ranking players to the forefront if they had such a great shot or such a great game to show their highlight? So here's an example where Wimbledon dashboard where we were able to you know, show Shintaro, who's not a top ranked player, but he had some great shots that day and we were able to bring it to the top of the dashboard but it also enables us to expose the up-and-coming players. So that which is a huge side product of it. But then the question comes, what does it take to trust a decision made by an AI model? How do we trust the decision of an AI model? I think there's four pillars to it. It has to be explainable, no question. If a loan was denied, we need to explain why that loan was denied. It has to be fair meaning there cannot be any bias. It has to be accurate, meaning the model drifting happens. How do we detect and correct it? And last not but least, it has to be open. And let me take 30 seconds and explain what I mean by open. I truly believe that AI is the biggest undertaking we are going to 
take in our lifetime and for generations to come. And if a single company or an enterprise is going to hold this algorithm close to their, their chest and not make it available, will miserably fail. So it has to be a movement. It has to be open. It has to be community driven. That's the only way we are going to make, eliminate bias, unethical practices from these AI models. So let me explain what explainability means. Look, here it's a real customer example where a bank denied the loan, and we show the three areas why we denied the loan. But that's not the most important thing. I mean, you know, an offer like Lime can do that. But what I call it the contrastive explanation, which means not only we can explain why the loan was denied, but we can also explain how we could change the outcome. So in this case, the outcome could have been changed if there was more money in the savings. I mean, what a great way to explain to a regulator, this is why the loan was denied, but also to the consumer, now you can take the case and say, you had a little more money in savings, the loan could have been approved. That's what I call contrastive explanations. Fair. It's another example. These are all real customer examples that we worked with customers. So in this case, you know, the bank had a threshold of female and male. As you can see, the female line is running consistently under the threshold. So you want to dig deeper. So you want to find out what happened. You can see females were given only 70% of the time loans, but males were given 80% of the time. Now you, as an individual, as the bank officer, you want to make correct it on the fly. But you can also you know, get an updated model from OpenScale, but you want to do it yourself. So how do you correct it? You can correct it on the fly by altering the outcome based on the features that you have used. So the fairness or bias detection not only can be detected, but it can be corrected using software. Three, accurate. I mean, we all know models drift as data drifts. So in this case, as you can see, there is two lines. One is the data being you know, changing and the model drifting. So you want to know why. Why is that happening? So in this particular case, the bank had run a marketing campaign, which was for a particular age group. But over time, a different age group started applying for the loan. So the data changed and the model drifted. You are able to detect it, but now you can correct it. But you also know why the data is changing. So you can use a different training set now to update the model. Open. Like I said, to me, it's very critical, it's very important that we keep this movement very open, that we contribute back and we consume and we work all together to make sure that the models we build are fair, are ethical, and are accurate. So in this case, you know, we built Watson OpenScale, but we also contributed back into the community. So if you look at it, you know, you take AI Explainability 360, you take AI Fairness 360, you take the Robustness Toolkit, we have contributed it back, making sure that we are contributing it back into the community. We are working with many customers, many enterprises, to make sure the models they build are using Watson OpenScale to make sure it's fair, it's explainable, it's not unethical. So it becomes much more important for all of us to be part of this moment, not just one vendor or one enterprise. So if you want to learn more about OpenScale and what we are doing from um, uh, making models more trustworthy, please join us at our booth. We also have a session at uh, 11 o'clock today where Rohan is going to give much more deep dive into it. But thank you for taking the time and really appreciate your time. Thank you.